Today we visit one of America's premier in-ground tree farms to take a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to take a plant from cutting to market. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned as we Garden Smart in Oregon. These moments of beauty and relaxation are brought to you by Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs, where every plant is performance tested, leaving you free to just enjoy. Find our award-winning shrubs at your local garden center. Bring the outdoors into your everyday life. Bass Pro Shops can outfit all your adventures, even those in your backyard. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 75 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. You have to rely on your gear, the way it feels, the way it does exactly what you need it to do. The F-Pace, how Jaguar makes an SUV. For 70 years, J. Frank Schmidt & Son Company has been growing new ideas. They're the originators of the well-known Red Sunset Maple and introducer of more than 50 other patented or trademark cultivars. Their company is known as a premier source of up-to-date deciduous tree cultivars and new introductions. More than 500 varieties and cultivars of deciduous trees are carefully grown on their rich Willamette Valley soils in the heart of Oregon, the nursery state. Today we meet with Nancy Buley to take us on a behind the scenes tour of what a day to day looks like in their life. Nancy, thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to Garden Smart. Well, thank you. And thank you for coming to visit us at J. Frank Schmidt and Son. So I think it's been almost a decade since I was here last. And it's, oh, it's a wonderful experience every time I come here. There's so much investment that's happened over the many, many years that J. Frank Schmidt's been in business into cultivars and improved plant selections. And, and it's, it's quite a process, and it's a labor of love. It's, 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 not, it's not cheap to do it. It takes decades to come up with good ones and to actually trial them correctly. And I'd like to, I'd like to walk our viewers through the process of what does it take? You know, when we see like, you know, a dirt heat river birch out there, an October glory red maple, you know, those, those cultivar names actually signify something important and, and that differentiates them from a seedling. So let's, let's talk about that difference first. What is the difference between when we see a named cultivar um, or just the genus and species, what's the difference there? Well, the difference is predictable performance. Uh, seedlings are great, but say you, you're in love with uh, Tupelo and it's beautiful red fall color, you go buy one at the garden center and for the next 20 years you're disappointed that the fall color was yellow or so and so. And with a cultivar that's been selected for its fall color, like uh, some of our Nisses or some of the red maples like October Glory or Red Point, you know that you're going to get that red fall color. Right, and so with, with any seedling, there's going to be a degree of genetic variability. In some cases, that variability could be enormous. And this is a great example. You could have anything from a really nice, well-formed tree with a good fall color to, to something that's rangy and, and not even attractive. Mm -hmm. And just the trend in housing, the houses are getting bigger, the lots are getting smaller, and there's right. just not room for great big shade trees. Um, so if you use a cultivar, you'll know what, what you're getting. And not only the color and the shape and so on, but the ability for it to perform in urban settings. That's, that's one of our criteria is that the trees need to be vigorous. That's kind of our first criteria. It needs to have really good vigor because vigor in the nursery indicates vigor out in the landscape. And so we're looking for the, the athletes, really. Right. <laughs> um, and then if they're beautiful, you know, it's the performance first and the beauty second. Yeah, and also through so. cultivar selection, there are plants that, 
that have had issues with disease or insect mm -hmm. pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, American Elm is a great example where they, they nearly vanished from the landscape. But now we're seeing that tree make a bit of a resurgence, um, you know, with selections like Princeton and mm -hmm. Sanchez that are mm -hmm. that are more or less resistant. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so we have this wonderful deer, you know, nostalgic American right. street yeah. tree mm -hmm. um, that we nearly lost. Yeah. Uh, but through cultivar selection, um, you know, we're able to steer certain plants away from, you know, yeah. things that were problematic. 30 years ago, we grew new, no elms. And now we grow at least 15 or so. And, and we do that, we've done that through working with universities generally and arboretums. And we've helped them trial like the U.S. National Arboretum. Right. That's one of the things that we do is, is collaborate on a on a high level with universities and arboretums and help them determine whether the trees that they have selected are gonna work here in our region. So let's talk about how the selection process happens. So when, when we're out there looking for cultivars, there, there are any number of ways that they, can be, that they can be selected or developed. How does that typically happen here? Well, we, by, through several ways. Just, you know, first I wanna say we, over the years, Schmitz has introduced or co-introduced more than a hundred specific cultivars. And one of those avenues is our customers or plant breeders will discover a tree and bring it to us. And so we'll propagate some and we'll plant, basically plant it out and look at it for five years, <laughs> maybe 10 years and um, decide whether it's really is unique. And another is our own breeding program where we so either, and there are several avenues there, either hybridize, like, like this tree, this was seedlings of, of red maple, and we were looking for a, specifically for a columnar maple that would be better than Armstrong maple. So these are Armstrong gold, and uh, it's looking great. We introduced it a few years ago. Red point maple was an example of looking for an improved red maple. We've, red sunset was our one of our first introductions, the one that really hit it big, that was 1966. Wow. So it's been a really great successful introduction for many, many years. And it and October Glory are kind of the standards. And then so Red Point was, is our improvement over that. And that tree was 17 years in the making. Our plant breeder, Keith Warren, observed it, trialed it, and we've trialed it all over the country and decided this is it. So we introduced it as Red Point. And that was after 17 years. And then, then we find seedlings in our rows that are outstanding. Like this is snow cone snowbell, which is a sweet little upright. It's if you picture a snow cone, right. you know, that you plop through your county fair and it plopped upside down. It has that inverted shape. So that, that, that was one that was found in the field. Um, another avenue is universities. Uh, this is uh, pink cascade cherry which is an improvement over the, your typical um, you know, weeping pink cascading cherry, really good disease resistance. Well, this was brought to us by uh, Tom Ranney at North Carolina State, who's a really outstanding plant breeder. And so we trialed it and it needs to be a good production plant so that you know, we can grow them and sell them profitably. And then sometimes um, some trees will, you know, you'll see a tree in the landscape that looks hey, that's different. Like our wildest right. alcova was a local street tree that had a low spreading form rather than the typical upright alcova. So yeah. lots of different pathways. Right, yeah. So either either from seedling blocks or things that we just mm -hmm. find in nature. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes branch sports can occur. So when right. we see a lot of, mm -hmm. I'd say probably most of the gold foliage or variegation mm -hmm. that we see in, in cultivar selections typically is the, the standard green mm -hmm. form that then will There'll be a mutation, mm -hmm. it's, and it's what's called a branch spore. We have that one golden branch off of this green plant, and that's how we now get yeah. the golden version mm -hmm. of that plant. And some of the variegated plants are that way, too, that come right. from a branch spore. And those have to be trialed for a number of years to make sure they won't revert. Sometimes Indeed. they do. Indeed. So, Okay, Nancy, so we've made, we've made our selection. Mm -hmm. So we've narrowed it all down to that one tree. And so this is the one that we want to make it out into the trade. Mm -hmm. What do we do now? Well... Before, before it goes out in the trade, we have to make sure that it will grow well as a field crop. And then we start bulking it up. It, right. it takes, you know, we, we start out with one tree, which might have, like say in some of our crab apples, started out as a block of 5,000 seedlings. And 
um, that those might have come from specific crosses where you collect the pollen off one tree and hand pollinate those flowers and then isolate them. Then in that block of 5,000 seedlings, maybe pick out 500 that look good. A couple years later, 50 that look good. Five years later, five that look really, really good. And then, okay, that's the one. We generally need to have about a thousand trees before okay. we'll introduce. So, so we have to plan for that introduction, take the time and get the numbers and then have numbers behind it and um, the market rules and whether our customers will like those trees, um, whether they'll work in those areas. Uh, it just takes time. It really takes about 10 years, I think, to, for a tree, a new tree, to make it into the, to be widely available. So one thing that's very important when we when we've made the selection, mm -hmm. we want those traits that we've selected for to be what ends up, you know, being out in the field. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's it's not definitely not a cultivar. Right. And so what we're going to do these are these are great examples here. So you can see we've got a little stem cutting here. Mm -hmm. It's maybe about a four inch piece of of, of stem material that's then treated with a rooting hormone, mm -hmm. and it's stuck in this container. So every little piece of this plant. If we were to cut it here and here, so you can make now two copies mm -hmm. of this, a third copy here, mm -hmm. a fourth copy. So that's how, you know, you, you speak of, of building the numbers up. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're doing that. In, in this mm -hmm. case, through vegetative uh, propagation, um, you could also bud or graft a plant if it, if it doesn't like to be on its own roots. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say that it doesn't root well or the quality of that root system uh, is not what we want. You know, then you can use budding or grafting, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, the tree has to have good good anchorage. A lot of trees do not do well if they're on their own root. And that, and that can be a challenge with certain cultivars. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we're working with, with a cutting, the root structure of a cutting is very different than the root structure of a seed. You know, of course, a seed mm -hmm. has this little packet of energy. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to form a tap root in most cases and then the lateral root. So it's structurally very different than a cutting where if I stick this little chunk of this tree in the soil, I could have one root coming off one side, of course that's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Or I could have 15 roots, and then I'm, you know, which is typically the case with a maple, and then I've got something that can actually make it to the field from there. Yeah, well we'll take this and uh, take it out of the pot when it's well rooted. So we will have our workers trim these, trim them pretty hard, and then it'll either be transplanted. This will probably go into a transplant bed here for a year, and then it'll be transplanted again to the field. Wonderful. And then we start growing it. Excellent. So, so it's about three years before it actually gets into the field where it'll be grown into a tree. Excellent. Well, let's go out to the field, Nancy, and take a look at some of these amazing cultivars. Okay. Nancy, as we discussed earlier, there's a lot that goes into designing and developing a cultivar. So we've made our selection. We've rooted our cuttings or we've done our budding and grafting, so now we have our little plants. And what J. Frank Schmidt does is take those little plants and basically grow them into something that can either be sold in market or lined out um, you know, for other tree growers to, to turn into really, really big trees. Kind of walk us through that whole process from the rooted cutting to the finished tree. We're trying to build good roots. That, that's right. what we do here is we make good roots and, and straight tops. Um, it takes anywhere from three to five, generally five to seven years for the trees that we produce and then send on to other growers. So, you know, for example, this is a, a, an oak that we developed that is, this is about a four year tree, um, about four years in the making and we'll be selling it this year. We start out with the understocks and then grow it for a year um, as a just trying to develop some roots and then the, the next year we develop the top which is will be the whip year the one year tree and then we'll sell quite a few of the trees at that stage but then we'll take other trees on to two year and what we call a two year and a three year tree which is about an inch and a half caliper and you know, all along the way we're pruning and staking this has a metal stake and we'll 
um, tape it so that it goes nice and straight up the stake. So we're always and we're always trying to make sure it has a straight top center leader and, and good branching. Nice. And just because we've made a great selection, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be able to maximize the traits that we've selected mm -hmm. for. So if we don't put all the work into it, mm -hmm. you still could have this amazing selection that that lands in market not looking like we really intended. So all of that work that goes into mm -hmm. the pruning and the staking, making sure that the root system is quality. So many times during the life of that plant, the roots are going to be pruned in the same way that the top's going to be pruned because when we prune those roots, you know, they're going to branch the same way that the top would branch. We don't see that because it's underground, but it's very, very important and it can't be missed. Um, and so if we don't do the root pruning the way that we need to, when we actually go to sell this tree, it might have survival issues because yeah. the root system could be really, really coarse. And so all of those little details go into making this plant mm -hmm. something amazing. And, and of course, that's what yeah. that's what Schmidt's focus mm -hmm. on is, is every single year, you know, what can we do to build the strongest root system, build the straightest trunk, and then on many trees, like, you know, say the, the maples, you know, are we building good structural branches? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we thinking about in year three, four, five, to make sure that when we finally see that tree, 15, 20 years from now, when it's when it's basically an adult, mm -hmm. um, you know, is it is it showing off the glory of of that selection that you know that might have taken 20, 30 years to actually develop? Yeah. One of the things that you mentioned roots. These oaks oaks tend to be problematic in in rooting. Uh, they're hard to transplant. So these this particular field is in root bags, uh, which control the roots and and can concentrate the roots within that bag. And so that's just one of the many custom things we do to, to do the best for that variety, for the roots. This, this is a, a hybrid oak and it uh, grows better in this kind of a, a root bag. So. Yeah, and that just comes from experience mm -hmm. of, of knowing the trees and, and you know, taking all those little extra steps along the way to make sure that you know, from the beginning to the end, you're building the strongest and highest quality plant mm -hmm. you possibly can. There are so many amazing plants that, that Schmitz has released over the years. And, and of course, you know, as we discussed earlier, probably five times that many that, that ended up not making it all the way, um, you know, just in the whole process of, of developing cultivars. It takes a lot of work. I want us to talk about some of the ones that, that you're really excited about, some of the winners. Mm -hmm. We're standing here beside Street Spire, which is, which is an amazing tree. And, and of course, seeing the, you know, the, the finished product of all this work, mm -hmm. uh, I can definitely see why, why this is one of your selections. Yeah. Well, Street Spire was probably, oh, it's probably 40 years in the making from wow. the time that Keith Warren, our plant director who has since retired, but he uh, started crossing the white oak with English oak to get a hybrid. And this is uh, one of the trees, Skinny Jeans is another one. But this one is special because it has really nice orange foliage and fall foliage and uh, kind of an orange flush when it leaves out. And one of the important things about it is that it drops its leaves cleanly in the fall. Wow. And so for people who want to have a nice clean leaf drop, not, not be sweeping leaves or raking leaves later on. Um, and it's also in good for areas where there's a snow load, where it doesn't have leaves left on it that might break. Um, another columnar oak is, this is another example of our introductions. This was, is beacon oak, which was brought to us by Dr. Michael Durr. And it is a swamp white oak, which columnar form in the Quercus bicolor is really unusual. Right. So. Yeah. Well, you can, you can see in both cases where the, the goal of a new cultivar is to bring something new to that genus mm -hmm. and species. And, and in, in every case, it should be an improvement of some kind, whether it brings, you know, additional disease and, and insect, you know, like pest resistance, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, in the case of these really interesting columnar forms, it's opening up a whole new world, mm -hmm. you know, as to where these trees can be used. And one of the criteria for this was mildew resistance, which is a problem in, in uh, English oaks. And so this has highly, it's highly mildew resistance and also gets the fall color from the white oak. What are some others that, uh, that you really like? A couple of the trees that we've recently introduced, uh, again, part of that breeding program of taking native trees and selecting cultivars of native trees. One good example that we've developed is 
a couple of tupelos, uh, black gums, uh, fire starter and afterburner. And what we were selecting for was upright growth habit and a strong central leader and consistent fall color. So we have a couple of really great cultivars of that uh, species. And uh, another bicolor, Quercus bicolor is American Dream Oak. It has really exceptional tight form. Um, it's a good one. Um, June Snow Dogwood is one that we've had out for quite a few years. That's really a nice performer and it's turned out to be much more uh, adaptable than we thought it would be. It's successful in the southeast, Colorado, and, and, and over the years we've learned that it's a lot more adaptable than, than we had originally thought it would be. We have some new crab apples coming on that are great, sparkling sprite, and raspberry spear, uh, real disease resistant and low maintenance and it's that's just, exciting. There's so many. I know, I know. So it's opening up trees. a whole new world to gardeners, landscapers, homeowners, and uh, it's it's so exciting just seeing how everything's yeah. changing. So Eric, this is another tree that I really like. It's a dwarf, well, a small stature Zelkova, and it was discovered in our seedlings. It's like, hey, that one. That one is growing slower than the others. It's more compact. It has short inner nodes between the leaves. And it has proven to be just a really nice, compact little street tree. Also a really good shade tree for small lots. Where I can see so many great applications mm -hmm. for this. Where there, there, there are a number of wonderful Zelkova cultivars. Mm -hmm. I think of Green Vase just because it's yep. like an industry mm -hmm. standard. Mm -hmm. um, but in many applications, let's say you're going to put that into an urban planter, mm -hmm. um, there are a number of wonderful reasons to plant Zelkova. Mm -hmm. It's fast, you know, the limbs stay out of the way. Mm -hmm. But in many cases, these old standards like green vase, they just get a little mm -hmm. too big. And what you really want is something that's, that's more mm -hmm. like this. So it's a wonderful innovation right, yeah. inside of that species. Yeah. And it, it matures probably about two thirds the size of say green vase, the standard varieties. And also has a really nice fall color too. So it, it's really catching on and, and our customers love it. We're just growing them as fast as we can. <laughs> Well, it's a lot of work, and, but I can tell that you love what you're doing. And, and, and of course, just seeing all of these new and amazing trees coming into the market. And of course, you know, seeing just the improvement from decade to decade to decade, you know, as we're kind of evolving, if you will, um, these new cultivars. And yeah. I've, I've so enjoyed spending the day with you, yeah. Nancy. It's been amazing. Well, thank you, Eric. And thank you for coming. Each week we travel the country north to south, east to west, visiting some of the most exciting gardens, as well as talking to industry horticulturalists about design principles, new plants, and also how you can be most successful with your home gardens. We also love answering your gardening questions, so visit us on the web at Gardensmart.com. These moments of beauty and relaxation are brought to you by Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs, where every plant is performance tested, leaving you free to just enjoy. Find our award-winning shrubs at your local garden center. Bring the outdoors into your everyday life. Bass Pro Shops can outfit all your adventures, even those in your backyard. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 75 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. You have to rely on your gear, the way it feels, the way it does exactly what you need it to do. VF Pace, how Jaguar makes an SUV. Today we've taken a walk through the fields of one of America's premier nurseries and learned a lot of what it takes to produce one of the best trees in America. If you have questions about anything you've seen today, visit us on the web at Gardensmart.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, even if you're a master gardener, there's always more to learn. So join us next week for more great gardening tips and ideas as we garden smart.